Tamasato ma sat gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Om Shanti 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 Mother, take us from unreal to real. Take us from darkness of ignorance to wisdom of light, from death to immortality. Om, peace, peace, peace. Welcome everyone on this Thursday session. Today we got two simple, very interesting point and we would be talking more on this or as we go along on the Sundays. So today, the first thing is, you know, the most important thing in this world to you and I is what? Think. What is it? I. That I. That English I standing. Capital I. I'm the most important thing in this world. And I'm always there. Which is this I? Where is this I? And there is one physician who is... Uh, an anesthetist and he's saying I with my friend did the x-ray of my body and I know about my body and I was asking which part of this is that I which is me this is the question that you and I and notice you're right now feeling you're feeling right now I I am there I'm there I'm listening I'm talking, I'm doing, I'm eating, whatever. What is this I? Generally, you and I think that I is this body and couple it with this mind, which mind has got various functions. And those functions are like that feeling itself, thinking, dreaming, comprehension, intelligence, memory, all these are functions of the mind. So, there are four functions and the fourth one is ego. Ego has two parts in it. You know, ego is very, very important. A husk of a moong dal, you sprout it. Unless the husk is there, it is not going to sprout, isn't it? Sprouting will only happen when the skin is there. The skin is nothing else but the husk, is nothing else but the ego. A comparison, close, not really, it's just a metaphor. So now, what does the ego do? Two things. One, it gives you that feeling of this body, this mind, this name, this form is I. And the second thing is called reflective consciousness that is reflective consciousness and this reflective consciousness is called chidakasha chidabhasha what is the relationship is the question came to me between this me body this mind and that real consciousness you and i have been studying vedanta for some time we know that we are that consciousness which is God, Aham Brahmasmi. What the relationship with that and with this reflective consciousness? Is it the same thing? That's the first question and the delving today a little bit. An example would do pretty good. Imagine that it's night. And it's a full moon night. Tomorrow it's going to be full moon. Buddha Purnima. Our very special regards and prayers will go to Buddha Purnima day. Now, Purnima, full moon. Have you realized we never look at the full moon and ever say that what beautiful sunlight? We are unconscious the truth that the moon's light is not the moon's light, it's the sun's light. Now, 
this moon's light example its sun is the consciousness the moon is the mind and notice it is reflecting on onto this earth it is if it is a dark night and all the lights are off full moon light will give us things to look at and work and recognize now understanding this comparison is the consciousness like the sun putting light onto our mind mind get that power and through the brain through the five senses organ is bringing the world to us this is called the feeling of i which i just said it is reflective consciousness understanding that reflective consciousness is not the consciousness the moon's light is not the sun's light but in a way you should still call it a moonlight why because unless the moon was there there will be no moonlight the moon being there and reflecting the sun's light has a right to say it is moon's light though theoretically you and i know that it is not the moon's light now what the relationship of that reflective consciousness or awareness with the true awareness is the big i and this i is a small i and that small i is the small self the big i is the param atma that is called the aham brahmasmi brahman brahman is vast infinite it the supreme consciousness you are i small limited consciousness is the reflective consciousness and the answer has been given in this book called the drik drishya viveka in which it goes ahead and answers three what the relationship of the reflective consciousness with the body with the mind and with the consciousness reflective consciousness is because of the consciousness showing the light so what is the answer first answer is karmajan sahajan and vrantijan karmajan is the relationship of the reflective consciousness with the body what does it mean as long as there is karma in other words as long as the body is alive we are going to get that feeling of i which is reflective consciousness awareness of i am this body and which will have mind reflection thinking comprehension understanding memory ego and buddhi intelligence to understand its comprehensions and all that all those functions are the part of the mind and that ego has got two covered it one is that one part of the ego says this is me which is what you and i are always say where is robin go sure this is me can't you see me i think this body and the mind and the name and my appointment and the role that i play as a husband as a wife as a children as a parent as the official is me and the other one is that so that is what that reflective consciousness which is the true awareness but not the consciousness awareness understand it this that the small i not the big i but what is it relationship with the body karma jal as long as the body is alive i'll continue to say and get the feeling this is i with the mind what the relationship of reflective consciousness with the mind is sahaja what does it mean as long as mirror is there my face i can see my face my face will reflect like as long as moon is there sun's light will reflect from there to the earth so i can see my face in the mirror as long as the mirror is there the moon is playing the role of the mirror so it is sahaja easy understanding that 
Now, think. There are two things. One is that advantage of seeing the face in the mirror. What is it? First advantage is that great advantage. You can see your own face. Otherwise, it's dark night. You can't see the earth. No lights, imagine. Because moonlight is not there. Similarly, if the mirror is not there, you cannot see your face. So you need the mirror to see your face. That is the great advantage. And moon has a right to say this is moon's light. But basically it is not the truth. It is apparent truth. Vabuhari called Vabuhari truth. And otherwise it is, it is transcendental. Now, third one. What is the relationship of this reflected consciousness with the true consciousness? The big I with the small I. A beautiful answer. And this answer goes ahead and says, Vrantijan. It's only stupidity. Meaning, there is no relationship. <laughs> the monks in Himalaya say, Beokufi ke matra hai sirf. There is no relationship. You will say, what is this? We have been talking so much about consciousness, reflective consciousness. There is no relationship with me, with the consciousness. Wrong. You have the right answer. I am the supreme consciousness. I have relationship with the reflective consciousness which is playing the understanding of the role of the body, the mind and the name and the form and that feeling of I-ness. I am the doer. I am doing everything. So who is the doer? I'll deal with it on Sunday. It's something, another line we will take on to. Did you understand this feeling? This I feeling is all the time with everywhere it is going on. So now, what is the advantage? That advantage is I am experiencing the whole world because of the reflective consciousness. Because that mind of mine is through the brain, through the five senses, is bringing the world. Have you ever realized our senses all go out? So what is the advantage? Is realization of feeling of I. All the time. It's a great advantage in the real world. Just see, when there is no mind, that feeling is not there. When is it there is no mind? For example, when you are in deep sleep, the mind is not there. There is no mind. So there is no thought. There is no feeling. So what happens? When you wake up from deep sleep, you say, I had a wonderful sleep. But you don't have no recollection other than that knowing. I have a wonderful sleep. What does that mean? It means that reflective consciousness had stayed connected with the consciousness during the deep sleep. Nothing else was there. No mind, no thought, no name, no feeling of body. You were in deep sleep. That gives you the real thing. Now, what happens after enlightenment? When you have an enlightenment, it's like you see your face in the mirror. And now you have an enlightenment. That's with the mind, you see. The enlightenment is going beyond the mind and going to Brahman, going to that consciousness and becoming one with the consciousness. Now, when you go beyond the mind, it's like you're seeing in the mirror and you say, this face in the mirror is not me. That is not me. I am here. This is my face. I can't see my face without this mirror. But this is me. That face is just an image. It is only like a screen playing the film role inside. Whatever film, whether it's a drama going on, whether it's a joyful laughter, or whether it's sad, or whether it's fighting, or whether it's you know pterodactyl dinosaurs are attacking, or King Kong is breaking, screen is not bothered. Screen is not bothered if the movie is not running like in a deep sleep or 
no mind status is one of the most important and very powerful is when you are injected for operation it is no mind at all coma but injected for operation state is higher than coma coma also you have slight awareness and there you literally zero now i want to take you on to the other point okay now there is a book which is written by ashtavakra sanghita is ashtavakra gurus of janaka maharshi and he is talking about something which i will come upon but there is something called avana shatakam which is shankaracharya has written now this is ashtavakra rishi who was the guru of janak maharshi and shankaracharya as you know is the guru of ramakrishna paramahamsa totapuri was his guru and totapuri's guru was shankaracharya this is why totapuri and shankaracharya sampradayas are called puri sampraday now that puri sampraday is actual name of ramakrishna vivekananda did you all know that is ramakrishna puri <laughs> and like totapuri vivekananda puri is a beautiful joke it reminds me once one of the monk you must have heard of him swami sarvapriyananda he is telling us the story in one of his discourse he says he was in gangotri doing sessions and practicing and reading ashtavakra gita and, and suddenly he found one of the tall that brahmachari bitter monk tall monk looks to be very senior monk he was sitting and he called sarvapriyananda so sarvapriyananda was very young that time just become a monk and he was trying to do sadhana in the himalayas he goes to him and he sit down so this monk senior monk asked sarvapriyananda kya naam hai shankar uh, sarvapriyananda said Swami Sarvapriyananda. So he said, "Guru Kaun hai?" He said, "Guru is Rama Krishna Paramahamsa." <laughs> he says, "Puri kaha gaya? Kha gaya kya? <laughs> you know, kachori puri we are supposed to eat." So that was a joke I remembered. Now, in this Avanar Shatakam, Shankar Acharya is saying there is. no guru no god and he says yes there is self the question is that how come shankaracharya says no self no guru no god and paramahamsa ramakrishna says there is god there is reality and there is also transcendental reality paramahamsa ramakrishna says, shankaracharya says there is no imminent reality imminent is imminent god imminent god is through this earth you and me and transcendental is beyond this universe beyond everything like the brahman right so what is this why is it which one is true is a question shankaracharya's point He is, after all, Guru is Guru of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa or Ramakrishna Swar. So now Vivekananda says very with clarity that we Hindus worship a transcendental God and immanent God, both together. How can it be both together? This is what we Hindus do. So you and I know, Aham Brahma, we Brahman is beyond everything. This is the transcendental, beyond the universe, beyond this globe. beyond the universe beyond the galaxy it that god transcendent the brahman vast along with immanent god because if the immanent god was not brought in as per that understanding what happens as if that transcendent god alone is beyond this universe that means what universe is separate god is separate are you with me that's what it means that is god is elsewhere and this is what you hear people saying 
when you become a good boy good girl you will realize god and you will meet god meaning god is not here right now god is there where is there heaven when you die then you will meet god advaita vedanta says no god is right now here hindus are saying brahma vishnu maheshwara or divine mother shakta call about mother kali durga saraswati lakshmi and you got 33,000, 33 crores of gods and goddesses. So, there is imminent God. It, through this universe, also transcendental God. Both Hindus worship that. Now, how do I understand this part of it? Is that you and I need to understand how. A very simple story, and we will discuss in detail that how do i understand this what is that real god the transcendental and imminent now that is beyond humanity beyond all limitation beyond infinite is the imminent god and within this reality is this god like you are seeing all the time in now this the brahman as we talked about advaitic word means vast beyond imminent god what we talked about is here with me and this is the advantage of the imminent god is you have something to go beyond transcend also come and live in this world and understand love have relationship with god this is what you will find arjuna god is krishna is a friend and like that let's say mirabai is her guru as well as her lover radha krishna like this various relationship in the hindu religion that you will find out and there is guru relationship friend relationship son relationship and we go on in the transcendental relationship in to hindu imminent god relationship in which what you need to understand it is like in a very small word today imagine transcendental is a huge circle just imagine a metaphor example and in the hindu's way of imminent god is imagine a small portion of that circle tiny part if you cut it it is what still part of that huge circle called the brahman but this part will look like a straight line isn't it if you cut a small segment look like a straight line you and i have done this experiment in the science that is imminent god and yours and my duty is to aware become aware discover that and merge the two practicing realizing enjoying having fun with this imminent god all the time being aware at the same time that i am that brahman that aham brahmasmi which is far beyond so what is the advantage i continue to play the role which i am in right now husband wife officer corporate member or student or whatever role i continue to play the sons and the daughters role and i play it by fully involved and not just playing a detached member in the family and saying i am spiritual or running off to himalayas in the cave and live there to say i am detached i am in search of god this is the advantage so shankaracharya says with that we will finish today's session brahma satyam jagat mithya this jagat is not real paramesh ramakrishna vivekananda says brahma satyam jagat satya 
how can you say Jagat is Mithya? After all, you're experiencing the Jagat. And what is this experience? Experience means you need to have an object and your consciousness. You have to be conscious. If I am in deep sleep or if I have been injected, I cannot experience the world. I experience this book. How? Because the book has to be there, the object has to be there, and I have to be conscious. More on Sunday. Develop some good questions, ask for it, have a look at it, reflect upon it, and I wish you a happy journey. Jaguar.